Hi everyone, so today is quite an exciting day for me because I am finally launching some skincare products that I started work on many years ago. Um, yes, yeah, so today I'm launching two products, my first ever skincare products, and this video is going to be a little bit about the story behind them, why I created them, what the journey was like, what the ingredients are. So it's going to be quite in depth and then I have made a second video where I'm actually using the products to cleanse and, and all the rest of it. So today I'm going to be launching my Skin Enhancing Treatment Cleanser and this is a multifunctional product so it works brilliantly as a deep cleanser, as a makeup remover, removes all your makeup and it doubles up as a face mask and a facial massage treatment. And I'm gonna go through all of the ingredients in this because it's epic. And then I have my Skin Enhancing Mist. And again, this works as a skin hydrator that you can use during your skincare routine, but it also works brilliantly with makeup as well. And I'm gonna give you the in-depth insight into that too. So both of these products, I actually started working on them when I started working on my foundation formula. And if you remember, if you've watched any of my videos before, that I created my foundation from scratch. And this whole skincare project was working alongside it. In fact, I had um, a couple of moisturizers, the cleanser and the mist, and the mist was supposed to launch at the same time as the foundation but it didn't, it wasn't ready yet. So things kind of launch when they're ready, which sometimes I know it's a little bit, why didn't that launch with that? But it, I, I'm, I'm just working and I like to spend my time working on them and getting them exactly as I want them to be before they launch. So that is why the um, mist and the cleanser are coming now. So starting with the cleanser. Now I was looking for well, I was doing loads and loads of work on ingredients and really studying what I wanted to have in my cleanser, in the way I was with my foundation as well. I had read an article about something called the Quileia trees and how they were the world's largest or, or most um, abundant source of natural saponins. Now, saponins were really interesting to me because they are very much part of history and for example, soapwort, which is another quite famous, I guess, saponin, a plant with, with natural saponins, is a plant that grows pretty much all over now, but it was very prevalent during the Roman Empire when they used to plant it around the Roman baths. And the reason being that the saponins inside the plant, when you add water, they would slightly um, foam and they were used as a cleanser throughout the Roman era. So I was already interested in natural, I guess, um, saponins and natural cleansers. And then I read this article about this um, award-winning company that had these incredible eco forests in Chile of these quillea trees. And then I read that they were the most abundant source of saponin. So of course my, you know, ears pricked up. And um, the more I read about it, the more I was fascinated by how they were, firstly, how they were doing it, because it's, it's all managed and it's all completely sustainable. The trees take 15 years to grow, but they wait until they're fully grown and then they, they harvest it in a way, the saponins, which comes from the bark. Um, they, ha they harvest it in a way that the trees aren't damaged. And anyway, they've, they've won all these awards. So I was kind of interested in that ingredient to start with, and that sparked my journey, I guess, into like, what can I put with this and what would make a really interesting formula that was different and that would give me what I need from a cleanser and also would be great for my clients and everything else. So at the time, and I've got to tell you this story, which is, I guess, a side story, but if you followed me for a long time, I think you'll appreciate this story. So when I started my blog, right at the beginning in like 2010 and I think I just started my YouTube channel and I did a competition it was my first ever competition I think it was on Facebook so yeah we're going back here guys um, and it was to win an email correspondence with me the email correspondence would be that you'd send me a photograph the winner would and I would analyze like what makeup would be good for them and I would send them a bag of all the makeup that I felt would work really well anyway had my winner 
and lovely girl, a uh, sort of 18 year old girl, started my correspondence and she sent me a photo and I was like, oh, I think, you know, this particular formula, what kind of skin, you know, what, we started chatting all about this and then I sent her some products and um, she sent me the, oh, you know, thanks so much and I'm trying everything out and it's been really great. But I want to ask you this question. So I was like, okay, what? She said, well, I love makeup, as you can probably tell. And she was really articulate about, you know, in all the emails. Um, but I don't think that I'm creative, but I'd love to be a makeup artist. So I was like, okay, are you good at science? And she said, I am, I'm really good at science. So I said, honestly, what you should do is you should be a cosmetic scientist because it's, and I just wrote all this stuff about how it's, you know, it's an amazing career. I said, I don't know your situation or circumstances, but if I was you, I'd come to the London College of Fashion because a friend of mine was the head, one of the head lecturers there at the time. And I used to read all the papers of the um, graduates because I was always looking for ideas. I still do that now. And I still hire from there when I'm looking for interesting people to work with me on formulas. So, um, didn't hear from her, that was it. Cut to like 2013, I had an email saying, I don't know if you remember me, but I won your competition and I'm now at the London College of Fashion, training to be, doing my degree in cosmetic science. So I was like, wow, that's great. I'm so happy for you. So she started coming in um, and when I used to write lots of, more blog posts than I probably do now, I probably should write more, but, um, she used to come in and I'd be like, oh, can you just help me with this ingredient and how, you know, do you think it's good? And these are the products I'm thinking of writing about and I've been trying them and why, can you look at the inky lists? And so she became like my kind of go-to. Cut to me launching my first lipsticks. She came, oh, she left college. I didn't have a job for her then. And then she went to work in an ingredients company, raw ingredients company, and then a skincare lab. And skincare is her passion anyway. And then she started working for me. So that was amazing um, and she worked with me around the time of the first lipsticks launching and then at that time we'd already started work on all of these the foundation so she helped me on that and I was working with other cosmetic scientists as well but she was actually here like working full-time with me so we started with the saponins um, oh, so I just thought that was a nice story because she worked on it and she won my first competition so it was a kind of really nice moment plus I like working with young interesting cosmetic scientists because they just want to change how things are done and I find that quite exciting so we started looking at other ingredients that would work together with the saponins with particularly this with this saponin which was the uh, quilea and then we were looking at all the ingredients so slowly slowly we started putting together a formula and me, you or I could not call up a raw ingredients company and say, oh, can you send us a bit of that stuff? You know, bit of this, bit of that, because you either have to call them and they send you, there's a minimum order, so you buy loads, or you've got obviously got to be a cosmetic scientist. So she contacted all the different ingredients we were interested in, and um, she booked just a day on the bench, as they call it, which she went to her old lab and asked to hire a bench for the day. Anyway, she made this stuff and it was just, you know, really nice. We were like, wow, this is such a good start. The texture is so interesting. Um, then we made some tweaks like, oh, we could add this and actually this probably would work better with that. And, and then friends started trying it and people I know started trying it. And we only ever had like a batch this big at a time because um, we didn't have much of the raw ingredients. So um, we got to a point and I think one of the things was I said to her, I don't want to have any if I can have no um, synthetic fragrance, no aromatherapy oils, no citron citrelles or um, linalools or anything like that, because I want it to be really um, something that works for like all skin types, even sensitive. So yeah, so we got to a point where we had this stuff that just looked like incredible honey, even though it's 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 not honey, it's a vegan product, but and we loved it. Um, and then it was, I guess the point is that when you make your own formula, you might make something in a small batch and all your friends love it and you love it, but you could never ever industrialize it. You can't scale it up. 
and that is why most companies um, that don't have their own labs go to labs and buy formulas because they know they're already tested they're already formulated but at the end of the day the lab owns the intellectual property and they own the formula um, and I really wanted to own this formula so I went to a lab Actually, by then the pandemic had struck and we were all in lockdown. So I contacted a lab and they were like, well, obviously, as the lock the first lockdown was coming off, they were like, well, we have a few people in, we can try and have a look at this for you. So I asked them, I said, look, it's my formula, my method. You know, I've already worked on it for a couple of years. They said, absolutely fine. Let's see the inky list. They looked at the inky list and was like, okay, we need to order this stuff because um a lot of this, some of it we have, but most of it we don't. Um, and then they just started trying to make it and sending us, and eventually we got to the point, they were like, yeah, this is stable, Like right? They have to test it for six months, test it in all different ways, never on animals, by the way. Um, but yeah, just to check that it's safe, it's stable, it's got all the safety regulations. So then we got to the point where it was like, okay, what kind of tube are we gonna put it in? Because I wanted it to be in a tube. And then I was just look, thinking about what kind of, um, what would be the most sustainable. I ended up with pre-consumer plastic because um, I did so much research into post-consumer plastic and you can't actually recycle that on. Whereas pre-consumer plastic, and what that actually means is that if you think of like an industry like that makes milk bottles or makes, um, I don't know, something, another industry and there's off cuts, all of that stuff normally goes into landfill. That's what I used. So I used something which had a life before and it'll actually be 100% recyclable afterwards. So comes in a box like this. I'm gonna go through some more of the ingredients in a second. And there is 100 mil, but it's incredibly concentrated. You need a blueberry size amount. And I'm gonna get into the trials that we've done now, the consumer trials and also um, the reason why I actually did clinical trials on this. So on to the ingredients. I'm going to start with the saponins that are present in the formula. And these are, I guess, the Earth's most nature's cleansers, if you like. It's what cleans the skin. The first one that's in there is soapwort. And that is something that, it's a plant that grows all over the world, but it was really kind of made famous, if you like, during the Roman Empire when soapwort used to be planted all around the Roman baths. The reason being that the roots and the leaves have natural saponins in them, so when you wet them, they could clean their bodies with them in the Roman baths. The source that I'm using, it's also Cosmos approved. It also is environmentally sound. And if you've ever been walking in say Italy and it rains in like the forest and you see, I don't know if you've ever seen like that little soapy effect that you see at the edge of the path, that is soap wort. So next time you see it, you know what it is. So the next saponin, and saponin actually means soap in Latin, is the thing that I mentioned at the beginning and this is the thing that really sparked my imagination for this whole formula. And that is the Quileia tree extract and it's from the bark and I was just so blown away by the um, the way they harvest it. It's all wild harvested, same as the soap board and it's won lots of environmental awards and Cosmos too. So they kind of form I guess the basis of the cleansing element of this cleanser and treatment. Um, that is then combined with glycerin and glycerin is again like soap wort quite um, not, as, not as old as soap wort but around since the 18th century it's it's the best gold standard humectant to this day and that means that it holds the natural water in the skin yeah it's just an ingredient that I do come back to time and time again although I'm always interested in using new ingredients and I'm really fascinated with sourcing those exciting new things, I do recognize an absolute gold star winner when I see one and glycerin is that. So the next ingredient that I decided to combine with the saponins is passion fruit seed oil or maracuya oil. Or I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, but this had incredible data in terms of what it can do for the skin. But I was fascinated that, it, again, it's upcycled. It is 
actually from a waste product from the juice industry. So if you think of passion fruit and how, I guess, passion fruit juice is very popular, during that process, the seeds are removed from the fruit and the passion fruit oil comes from those seeds. So it's a really nice environmental upscaling kind of story. But that aside, this stuff, the oil that comes from these passion fruit seeds is incredible. So the first thing to say is that it is so rich in antioxidants, but it's also antibacterial as well, which to me is a really interesting combination and it's anti-inflammatory. Usually, Sometimes ingredients are one or the other. They can be antibacterial, but they're not so much the other. Whereas this has all of that going. It has the antioxidant, it has the anti-inflammation. Um, so that means it's good for lots of different skin conditions, whether it is an eczema or more of a psoriasis skin or more of an acnogenic skin. So it kind of ticks all those boxes and it's got as much antioxidant in as lycopene, which is what's in tomatoes. And everyone you know, talks about how incredible food, uh, incredible food tomatoes are because of that. So it's really good for repairing and healing damaged and weakened skin. Or if you don't have that, just good for keeping your skin in tip top condition. It helps to boost the fibroblast in your skin and also boosts your natural hyaluronic acid. So not adding, it doesn't have a hyaluronic acid in it, but it helps to boost the hyaluronic acid in your skin. So the next ingredient is squalane. It's been talked about a lot for the last few years. It tends to be like the hero ingredient in many masks and moisturizers and things um, and I feel like a lot of the the um, ingredients that I'm putting in my mask slash cleanser they're all hero products that in even in another range might be the hero product in one item whereas I feel like I've got a lot of really strong just strong efficacy, and that's what I'm going for. Um, that's what I wanted from this treatment cleanser, that the efficacy of each of the ingredients is kind of proven and very, very strong. So yeah, you've heard of squalane. I'm actually using a sauce from um, olives. So it's actually from Spain, the sauce I'm using. It is palm-free. It's a stable derivative of something very similar to the squalane that's naturally found in your skin. So it's just boosting that. So the next ingredient is oat kernel oil, and this is extracted from the oat kernel. It's an ingredient that has been used a lot in skincare. It is great for sensitive skin, and it, all, it is also fantastic because it's those ceramides that we all need to repair our skin barrier. And I felt like it was a really important one to include, not just for sensitive skin, obviously it's great for sensitive skin, but it's great for inflammation and it's great for repairing the skin barrier. Because it contains the ceramides, if you've got, if you think of the top layer of your skin as being like bricks, and if the cement is somehow stripped away from using loads and loads of acids or everyone's kind of crazy on the acids now and the really strong treatments and I feel like as great as they are sometimes sometimes you really just have to repair that skin barrier and go back to basics and this is really really good for that so it's anti-inflammatory it's antioxidant it's also a great source of linoleic acid so it really helps to kind of restore and repair the skin and it's just really a gold standard ingredient. So the next ingredient is prickly pear oil and this is a precious oil from cactus and it's had, again, it's had a lot of, um, I guess, people talking about it in the last few years and it has been one of my favorite ingredients for a good few years now. I often kind of seek out products that contain it. It's just great for cell rejuvenation. It's got vitamin E, it's just very, very nurturing, great for hydrating the skin, helping your skin to feel kind of moisturized from within. So I had to have it in there. So the next ingredient, and this was something that was suggested to me by a cosmetic scientist because of the data it had, was meadow foam seed oil. And this is a very, very light oil. It's so lightweight, non-greasy. Um, and it's from a plant which is native to Oregon, Western Canada and California. And it just had, again, really, really good data. And this really helps to give the skin that 
almost well moisturized from within and slightly plumped and cushiony feeling and I really liked the way when we added this into the formula we did have that almost plumping feeling to the skin and it is also a Cosmos and EcoCert approved ingredient. The next ingredient is Caprylic Capric Triglyceride and this is something which is present in lots and lots of moisturizers and um, skincare which you'll probably now that if you look at inky lists on your products you'll probably see this and it is it's derived from coconut oil but it's not like the coconut oil that you cook in it's not kind of like pore cloggingly heavy thick oil it's been refined and refined and refined and refined until it's basically just the essential fatty acids this is really good for helping your skin to stay hydrated and feel replenished without feeling greasy so after using the cleanser myself really on and off for the last few years whenever I've had a batch I'm using it and I felt and friends of mine felt that when I used it and I left it on even just for a few minutes my skin when I removed the cleanser completely and rinsed it off my skin felt moisturized to the point where I didn't have to use as much of my regular moisturizer afterwards but obviously it wasn't, I hadn't done any clinical trials and I, you know, that's just, I guess, um, quite a subjective thing. Um, even though everyone was agreeing with me that had tried it, like I'd say, how do you find it? And they'd say, oh, my skin feels this, this, and this. And I was like, I feel that too. So I decided to do a clinical trial on it, which you don't normally do clinical, clinical trials with cleansers because they're not usually masks and treatments as well. They're usually just you know, skin cleansers. So I decided to put it through clinical trials with an independent lab. That means that following the, um, the standard protocol, they will put it through the mill and under a microscope and check skin and, and keep all the data and eventually let you know what how good this product is. So I had no idea what was gonna come back. I was hoping that it would be slightly increase moisturization or natural hydration in the skin um, and obviously that it would remove all the makeup because I had been using it as a makeup remover and as a you know a cleanser. One of the things that came back was that it removed a hundred percent of waterproof SPF, uh, one of the longest wearing foundations on the market waterproof and long wearing eye makeup and basically a full face of makeup and waterproof mascara but it did so in one cleanse which I was thinking it was going to come back with it you know I was hoping it removed all of that because I knew it did but obviously clinical trials are quite different because they're looking under microscopes but it it removed a hundred percent of that in one cleanse so I just couldn't believe that, you know, I'm the one that's been going on about double cleansing since my first video about that in like 2010. Before anyone was talking about it, I was like, you have to double cleanse because of SPF and this, that and the other. Whereas um, my trials came back that it was 100% of removal with one cleanse. So with this cleanser, the days of double cleanse are over and it's clinically proven, which is very, very nice. The second thing that it showed was that after, I, I got them to test it, if you apply it, massage and leave for two minutes. So that means when you're having your cleanse, you, or using it as a mask, you leave it on for just at least two minutes. So I said two minutes because I think even the average person who might be super, super busy or somebody that's like extremely busy still has to clean their teeth. So if you were to apply it, do a massage, then clean your teeth, leave it on. And that's when we did the clinical trials after two minutes of wearing it and of having it on your face. And it was a 73, this is once it was removed. So after, after it's all removed and washed off and face is dried, there was a 73% increase in the moisturization and hydration of the skin, so within the skin. I had felt that, but I had to have it, um, I had to have it proved. So that was incredible. Um, and I feel like that's why it kind of feels like your skin is a little bit plumped up after you've used it. The other thing that I wanted to check was the skin barrier, because again, everyone's acid crazy now. And um, I think it's so important to keep that um, your uh, 
it, it keep the integrity of your skin barrier. So that was also tested and it was found that after fully cleansing with this, rinsing with water, all of the rest, the skin barrier was not altered, was not disturbed at all. And in fact, after continuous use, the skin barrier, the natural skin barrier was improved. So the lipids in the natural skin barrier, the ceramides, your natural ceramides um, were improved. Buoyed on by the results of the clinical trials, I decided to do user trials as well. And this again is an independent lab where they, you put your product into a little bottle that no one can tell where it's from, what it is, what's in it and you say what it is, it's a cleanser and a face mask and it gets sent out and you ask various questions. So some of the questions I would say after first use, like I think about three of the questions were after the first use and the rest of the questions were really after two weeks. So 77 people that I've never met used it for two weeks and reported back. So I'm gonna read them out because um, I've got quite a few results here. So 79% liked the natural scent of the cleanser, which made me very happy because obviously I decided not to put any artificial perfume in and I didn't put any of the um, essential oils like the linalool, the limonel, the cit the citric acids, the citrals, all those things that are usually sort of piled into formulas to get to mask the, the ingredient that doesn't smell good. Um, because mine has the natural scent of the saponins, which I personally really like, I was hoping that a good amount of people would also like it. Um, so that was a really good result for me. 93% um, really like the feel of the cleanser on the skin and it is a different cleanser, a different texture. It's, it is different to what you will have felt before. Um, so that was a great result. 93% felt my skin felt softer and smoother after using the cleanser, great. And then all the rest of them were after two weeks. So 86% my skin feels refre refreshingly clean. 83% my skin looks more radiant. 87% my skin feels more hydrated. So that's really good because that's obviously we've done that in the clinical trials. 80% my skin appears more glowing. 81% after two weeks my skin appears brighter. 79% skin appears clearer. 79% skin looks more rejuvenated. 82% feels more protected. 82% my natural barrier feels strengthened, which again I've proved already anyway in the clinical trials. This one was interesting. 69% said that they it resulted in them needing less of their usual serum or moisturizer. Again, I had personally found that and people that had tried it, tested it for me, personally found that. So it was really good to find out that that was um, something that was, you know, a lot of people found. 75% said the cleanser offers the same hydrating and skincare as a mask. So it worked really, really well as a mask too. So again, I was thrilled with those results. So onto the actual texture. I'm not going to cleanse in this video. I've already done a cleansing video where I'm using the products. I'm really aware that this is quite a long video as well. So. It is gonna be in the other video, but I'm just going to show you the tube, which is fully recyclable. It's a really nice soft touch. And the texture, you actually only need a tiny amount. And I know we're kind of used to kind of using too much product, but because of the texture, I mean, if you can see it, you need a blueberry sized amount. That is enough to cleanse and remove your makeup and do a full cleanse, a mask, and get all the results that I've spoken about. Um, the texture itself, I'm gonna put a bit more on, probably more than you would need, just so you can see. It's like a kind of thick honey texture. And when you start, um, you can see how kind of solid it is. When you start massaging it, it kind of feels like a gel, a thick, thick, thick gel. And then you massage, it's really good for gripping the skin so you can feel it to do a massage with. It's, yeah, I've had actually facialists trying it as well and they say it's like one of the best things for 
doing a facial massage because it's got the slip but it's also got a bit of grip as well so it's great for kind of working all those contours really improving the circulation in the skin after about 25 seconds of massaging it then becomes thinner and it turns into what feels more like a regular cleansing balm oil you know the ones that you massage and they kind of change and it transforms and then once you've done that then you could just you could either leave it on, I'll show you all this in the other video, you can leave it on a thin layer and just do a mask if you've already got a clean face. You can put it on do a massage if you've got time and then leave it on as a mask. I leave it on for like if I've got 15 minutes or 30 minutes, other times leave it on for two minutes. I still get good results. And then once you've done that, you can just get some water, add the water to it and it becomes like a really soft, milky emulsion. So you massage that all over and then ah, I have some, I'm actually launching some beautiful cloths but I know a lot of you probably already have your own cloths but I'm launching these really nice double sided cloths, really gentle for skin so a really soft side that even for the most eczema psoriasis skin is not going to irritate your skin and the other side is a really really soft exfoliating side but a little bit softer I think than a lot of the cloths that you can get. They're going to be coming in a pack of two like this so if a cloth is something you do need and these are honestly I'm not just saying that I've tried every single cloth under the sun believe me when I was researching for this there's not a cloth I have not tried um, to get to the one the exact one that I wanted so yeah if your cloth is something you need they come two in a pack and I'm actually doing a bundle deal with the cleanser so if you get the pack with the uh, sorry the cleanser with the cloths then it's actually quite a good deal once you've done that you can remove it with a warm water remove the cleanser and then rinse it and then dry and then you'll feel that how nice your skin feels after that and there each blueberry size droplet is half a mil there's a hundred mil in there so there's 200 blueberries in there so depending whether you do one cleanse whether you use it as a mask it will last you a good while and it's very very concentrated so don't you don't need to use loads and loads and also the cleanser comes in a really nice box again fully recyclable so that's my cleanser so on to my skin and makeup enhancing mist it comes like this it's a recyclable can really lovely can with a recyclable box and it's a very 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 fine mist so onto the ingredients which again are really really hydrating and also helpful for settling makeup as well so you can use this either as part of your skincare routine or as part of your makeup routine or both i in fact use it a lot um, i've been using it on my clients now for a good year i'd say um i know it's showed up in various people's um, Instagram stories when, and I've used it in some of my videos so I know that some of you know knew that it was coming basically. So the really good ingredients in there, it's obviously got water in because it's a mist but it also has glycerin, gold standard, my old favourite. It has niacinamide which I know is such a popular ingredient now and it's, again it's a real hero product, a real hero ingredient in many products. It has um, film Excel, which is the natural biopolymer that was in my foundation. It's also in my high, my elevated glow highlighter. And this is not only a great skincare ingredient, it also forms a sort of mesh. And what that does is it gives a slightly almost um, firming feel. After you've sprayed, you can kind of feel that once it's sort of settled, that slightly firming toning feeling and it also helps the makeup not only to settle but the makeup to last so it's not one of those 24 hour wear all you know spray um makeup setting sprays that are basically alcohol and silicone the formula is all natural but it does help your makeup to last it brings the hydration back to the skin another ingredient in the mist is aloe vera juice and if you've watched my videos before, you've probably seen me using like natural aloe vera and using it on my face. I am quite a big fan of that ingredient and it is just very refreshing. It's moisturizing and it's soothing. Another interesting ingredient that we found for the mist was something called Hydrolite 5 Green, which sounds quite sci-fi, 
but actually it's a completely sustainable ingredient which is a byproduct of sugarcane so it's very ethically sourced and it had some really great data in terms of hydration, helping the skin to hold on to its natural own moisture, and also helping with the efficacy of the other natural ingredients, the, sorry, the other active ingredients within the formula. So this is something which kind of acts a bit like a catalyst. It's helping everything to do its best job, if you like, and hydrating at the same time. Oh, the other thing it has, it has something called multi-moist in it, which is a really interesting um, ingredient I found. Some of it is derived from beetroot extract. Don't worry, it's not purple, it's not red, it's colourless, but that had incredible data on skin hydration. And it has eight amino acids in there, so it's really good skincare as well as... Um, Help helping to fix your makeup. And the way I like to use it, and I'll, I'll show you in the other video, is to um, give a spray sort of during my skin, after my cleansing. And then sometimes when I've done the foundation, I'll give a little spritz when I'm just settling all the makeup in. And then on clients, when I've completely finished the makeup, particularly if it's like a red carpet thing, when you've got full makeup on, full foundation, full powder, everything on there, there's a moment when I kind of don't love the makeup because I feel like it just needs to settle and get a little bit more, you know, that thing that makeup does after like five or 10 minutes. And giving a spritz with this really just helps that makeup almost to fuse. And then throughout the shoot or throughout the day myself, if I'm adding powder to my face or I'm just kind of starting to look a little bit dull, I want a bit more of a glow, I'll give a spritz. And it's a very fine mist, I'll, I'll show you now how fine the mist is. Hopefully you can see this. So it gives a really kind of soft, you don't feel like it's gonna disturb your makeup. And then it just settles. It takes a couple of minutes, obviously. And then you can either just pat it in. If, you, if you're still in the middle of doing your makeup, carry on with your makeup. Um, or if you're in hot weather, obviously you just wanna kind of cool down or you just want to take away sometimes that powdery look that makeup can get, particularly if you're touching up a lot. And it just kind of brings that glow back to the skin and helps the makeup to really fuse and last. So good in your skincare routine, good as part of your makeup routine and just really nice to have in your handbag. So I think that is it. I can't believe it. I think I might have covered everything that i'm sure i'm gonna there's things i haven't covered so if you want more information please go to my website because i've got loads more information on there and please do watch this video that i'm about to post in a couple of days where you can see me actually using the products cleansing the, with the products um how i use them and i think that will also help you to get the most out of them and if you have any comments any questions rather at all please do let me know in the comments below or message me on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere and I'll be able to answer your questions if you, um, if you have any other questions. So that's it. I cannot believe I've made a video for my first ever skincare launch. I honestly didn't think that these were gonna launch. There was a moment there when um, about six months ago, I had a... Um, more of a corporate type of figure come into my little organization here. And um, she'd come from another really big brand. And I just got to the point where my cleanser had passed all the tests, the packaging was great. Um, I was kind of ready to sort of begin to push, push the button. And um, I showed it to her and I said, it's amazing. It's, you know, oh my God, it's like the best thing ever. It does this, it does that, it's like incredible. Anyway. She's like, okay, we have to kind of have a, a closer look at this. And um, she came back and said, do you realize that the ingredients, a couple of the ingredients that you've chosen are like the most expensive skincare ingredients like you can possibly get, basically the sapper gels. Um, and I was like, no, I actually didn't know that. And she said, did you ask, at any point, did you ask the price of the raw ingredients? So I said, no, I honestly didn't. So, she said it's not viable. It's not viable to sell this as a mask and cleanser because it's it's going to be too expensive. There's no way we can um, we can do this. So I went back and I was given an alternative to the ingredient which combines the two saponins with the glycerin, 
Um, they came up with another solution, another version. Anyway, I was like, mm, I don't want to do that because this is the thing. This is like the thing. Anyway, then I remembered, hold on a minute, this is my formula, my method, my intellectual property. So we cut, instead of the lab ordering everything in through a, a third party, straight to the horse's mouth, straight to the raw ingredients, the, the, the um, labs that make the raw ingredients, and actually bought the ingredients from them directly, and then had it shipped to the lab and saved everything that we needed to save to make this a viable product. So it's still, it's, it, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, it's not, they're not cheap products. I didn't choose cheap ingredients. I was so focused on maximum efficacy and ingredients which are sustainable and all of those things where people are paid properly and that all does cost money. So these are not the cheapest products, but I think they're value for money in terms of what you get from them and the fact that there is proven results and they do last ages and ages and ages. So um, if you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments below. And um, I'm really excited for you to try the textures and um, yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for watching. I know this has been, incredibly long but I just wanted to give you the whole story so I hope that was enjoyable. Lots of love. Take care. Bye.